YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, today we are doing a little bit of service work for a local ham. We're installing a couple of upgrades in his Elecraft K3. He has one of the earlier K3s, and he wanted to extend its uh, range down so he could start playing around with the 630 meter band. Um, he needed uh, at least one upgrade, which would be the, the uh, KBPF3A general coverage receive option and one of the things in that manual is they tell you to check and make sure you've got the right synthesizer because you need an upgraded synthesizer and uh, we'll go to the GoPro video for this um, the original KSYN3 synthesizer board will not work with the uh, upgraded uh, general coverage receiver option you need the KSYN3A board now, I already had uh, checked this radio for this guy, and he did not have the new board, so he had to order that. So we, now we have two upgrades to install, the new synthesizer and the, uh, the uh, general coverage receiver filter board. Uh, there is pretty good instructions that uh, Elcraft provides for you. Um, nice manuals, step-by-step, -step, and they try to be pretty complete. They've got nice illustrations here notes about various things but there is one gotcha and we'll cover that when we get to it because if you don't pay attention uh, the manual does not mention something very very important here and you could damage your radio when it comes to removing the bottom panel don't know if we'll have to do that in this case but I am going to talk about it um, in fact I'll just talk about it right now just in case we don't have to do it we'll at least cover it it's in the uh, the general coverage receive option install and on the page where they talk about removing the bottom cover because you might have to install some standoffs for the new board okay um, they show you where all the screws are and there are three screws that say C note and these three screws on the bottom panel have lock washers on them now the note um, just tells you that those screws are of a different length and have lock washers. That's all that it tells you about. It tells you to keep those separate and put them back in the same place. What they don't tell you, and that's where this is important, is that those three screws, um, at that point under this panel, there are either voltage regulators or transistors uh, in that case with the tab on it, you know. and the bottom panel is actually acting as a heat sink so those transistors are up against this bottom panel at these three points and those transistors have those little heat pads heat transfer pads between them and the case that insulate them from the case but transfer heat and those pads get sticky so when you take these screws out and you go to lift this bottom panel up it won't want to come up it'll it'll feel like it's stuck on something and if you just pull on it what you'll be doing is you'll be pulling those transistors up off the board and you'll break those leads. So what I um, had to do when I took this bottom panel off on another radio is I had to take a tiny jeweler's screwdriver and go in through that screw hole there and just sort of just sort of push that transistor off the bottom panel, get it to pop loose so I could lift this panel off. So if we have to do that, I'll show you in, in, in up close. But be aware of that. If you have to take this bottom panel off, those three screws are holding transistors against the bottom of the case and they will be stuck to it. So you'll need to get them to pop loose before you pull that panel up. Otherwise, you'll break the leads on those transistors. And that wouldn't be a bad day. So anyway, doing the upgrades. Um, when you do one of these upgrades and they give you nice instructions, don't just dive in. Uh, read through the entire procedure once at least first and then read through it as you're doing the upgrade uh, that's going to help you to subconsciously catch yourself from missing a step you don't want to miss any steps um, or uh, yeah well anyway uh, i always recommend that read through the instructions completely first and then read through them again as you're doing the upgrade so let's get into this so to install this general coverage receiver um, 
da, 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 da. they give you a bunch of preliminary stuff here ESD stuff and I've got a mat and I've got a wrist strap that I'll be using uh, they show you pictures of the uh, printed circuit board and then they want you to take off the cover uh, they're gonna want us to take off the cover if we've got optional things like the two meter module installed how to remove that if you've got the optional sub receiver installed how to remove that more on the sub receiver so if you have the sub receiver there's quite a few extra steps because the uh, the filter board is going to go in the sub receiver itself but we don't have one on this radio and then installing it into the main receiver and I think it was right up here at the beginning in the prerequisites the K3 must be equipped with the KSYN 3A synthesizer to tune below 500 kilohertz okay uh da, 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 da. what type of synthesizer so we need to install the k sin 3a synthesizer before this filter can go in so we need to do that one first all right so i've got the instructions for the uh k sin 3a and again I've, I've already well i've already read through them so we're just gonna we're just gonna get right into it tools required standard stuff in the board screws and lock washers and those are included and of course screwdrivers uh, check firmware the uh, radio has got to have firmware version 5.14 or later so I already made up a serial cable and I checked the firmware on this radio and it's at 5.62 so he's up he's up to date if you don't have at least 5.14 then the first thing you need to do is install new firmware or it won't be able to use the uh, the updated synthesizer so that's already done okay we're gonna remove the top cover and we're gonna dive right in so we take off eight screws on the top cover there's three across the front three across the back and there are two or there's one two oh, there's three actually okay so there's nine screws three across the front and then there's three across the middle here do not take out the four screws around the speaker you do take out this middle one back here but not these four beside the speaker those are holding the speaker in and then on the back there are two screws at the corners of the top panel and one in the middle where this little tab goes out so we have to take that screw out and then our top panel should just come off now they've recessed this panel so I uh, take a small flat jeweler screwdriver and in one of the screw holes I'll get it under the panel and just lift it up and then I can there, just take the whole panel up I'm going to disconnect the speaker here to get it out of the way and we can put the panel aside okay and we are in now the synthesizer board is right here at the front of the radio Let's see if that's showing up on the no it's not showing up on the GoPro there we go right here is the old synthesizer board at the front of the radio and that is held in with two screws here it's got a single coax going to it and then uh, it's plugged into the board at the bottom I'm going to turn the radio around to work on this and we'll go to the next step if it does not have it does not have the two meter option go to replacing the synthesizer on page 12. page 12 unplug the coax cable from the synthesizer and when you these little coax cables um, they're crimped onto this connector you never want to pull on the cable okay you, you want to pull on the connector itself it's got little wings sticking off the edges of it so you want to use these wings to pull the connector out don't pull on the cable or you'll pull the cable out of the connector and again you'll have a bad day 
And then we got two screws. Now, there's a lock washer on the back <clears throat> of the board, so you want to loosen those screws up. And I'm going to probably need needle nose pliers because we're going to need to be careful not to drop those lock washers. Boy, they, they don't make it easy on this radio. Let me get myself a shorter screwdriver. Those are some deep screws. Yeah, this is this is a tedious part. I see what you want to do. You want to loosen these screws up. all the way but keep them in place and then you can keep those lock washers in there when you lift the board out. There we go. There's the old synthesizer. Now the new synthesizer. And we don't have the extra high stability oscillator, so we don't have to worry about that. Just the synthesizer board itself. Remove the current synthesizer from its envelope. Da -da 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 -da. Inspect the back of each board for long leads. That's interesting. Oh, I see. They have a picture here. Let me bring the GoPro video up. Here we go. Uh, apparently, they had some quality control issues and leads did not get trimmed. And so they want the leads to be no higher than the back of U11, which is that chip right there. So we're looking at this chip and all of these leads, and these look like they are trimmed far enough. They're not any higher than the back of that chip, so that's good. We don't have to do any clipping. Next step. Install the board as shown. We're going to reuse to the da -da 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 -da, using the using the screws that were supplied and the interior tooth lock washers you removed earlier. Okay, so we're going to use those two lock washers that came off of the old board and the screws that are supplied. They gave us a nice envelope and in that envelope, oh, there's the screws and the lock washers. Okay, so we've got the right screws. Ignore that note. Okay, so I'll put the board down into the connector. You have to line those pins up. Okay. I see why they wanted to make sure the leads were trimmed. After I've got the board on the connector and all those pins are lined up and they're in, we're going to put in the screws. Now this new screws come with lock washers, so we'll put the lock washer on there. And we'll get the screws started. There we go. Don't tighten them down right away. Get them started while the board is loose so you can move it out a little bit. That just helps you to line that screw up. And then once we've got them started, then we can go in and we can tighten them up. And you don't have to crank them super tight. Just get them good and snug. Those lock washers are going to hold the screws. And our board is installed. 
Um, I would say inspect at the back here, look down through there, maybe use a, a light if you have it, and just make sure that none of those pins are touching this back shield. And it looks like we're clearing just fine. Now, the next step is going to be reconnecting. That's if you have the sub receiver. We don't have the sub receiver. And our connector from the reference oscillator, this cable we pulled out, goes to J38, which is this one right up here. We'll plug that back in. And that should do it for the synthesizer installation. That's the easy part. And they've got a testing phase where you power it up and you test it. We'll do that after we get the filter board put in. Okay, so now we have the correct synthesizer. We can go to the filter installation. Da da da, da 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 da. Okay, here we go. Take off the top cover. We're already off. Uh, remove the uh, two meter module. We don't have one to remove. Sub receiver. We don't have one to remove. So we can skip over the sub receiver instructions. And here we go. Installing the filter on the main receiver. Check the RF board that covers the bottom of the chassis area to see if the standoffs shown in figure 10 are installed. And the RF board, KBPF3A. He's got one already. Well, he's already got the, the filter board installed. Let me pull this out and just visually verify. KBPF3. Rev A. Yes. He's already got this installed. All we needed to install was the synthesizer. Well, he'll be happy. He'll be able to send this back. Ho, ho, ho. Well, all right. Um, so, pull up the GoPro video here, make sure I can show you this. <clears throat> Looking in this radio, where's my pointer? My pointer escaped. It ran away. Yeah, well, I'll use a pencil. <clears throat> this board here is the board that uh, we were about to install, but he's already got it in here. So he doesn't need it. All we really needed to do was install the synthesizer. So I guess we'll call this video installing the uh, uh, KSYN 3A synthesizer board because that's all we're going to be doing on this radio. So we've got that installed. All we need to do is test it pull the old synthesizer out of the way and we'll plug her in. <sighs> Power cord. Okay. She's up. We don't hear anything obviously because we have a speaker unhooked. <clears throat> uh, initial checks, apply power. On the K3 front panel, hold in the config menu. Config menu. And turn tech mode on. Config, tech mode. K M P Q R S T Tech Mode is on. Tap Menu to exit. And then tap Display on the front panel. Rotate the VFO knob to display SIN 1. Oh, VFOB knob, yeah, to display SIN 1 in the VFOB area. SIN 2 off, SIN 1, okay. 
you should see status OK. And it does. So that's it. One other thing it says, if you have a K3 equipped with the 100 watt PA in it, which this does, uh, we strongly recommend that you rerun the 50 watt transmit gain calibration. So we're going to have to do that. And you can do that through their utility software, which I'm going to pause my recording here, get that all hooked up, and uh, hook up a dummy load, and we'll do that calibration. All righty, we're set up to do the uh, calibration. Um, I have a serial port hooked up to the serial connector on the back of the radio, and I've got a dummy load hooked up to the uh, uh, antenna output. And over on the computer, we have the K3 utility running. I'm running Linux, that's why port says dev slash TTY USB 1. Nice thing of uh, LCraft, and my hats are off to them for continuing to maintain Linux software for their radios. Good on you guys. Uh, we'll test communication, and it's okay. It found our radio, version 5.62, and we'll go over here to calibration, and we're going to calibrate transmitter gain. So I'll click that. Here's our transmit calibrator gain wizard. Uh, antenna connector, antenna 1, we've got a dummy load connected to it. Click, click Next. Click, click Calibrate to start the 5-watt calibration. It's going to do that first. Now, what we should see on the front of the radio, yep, the K3 utility is taking control, and it is running the radio through its paces. Now, the instruction manuals say that you need to do this calibration for... Um, full power out on all the bands, that if you don't do it, you might get low power on some of the bands after replacing that synthesizer. So this should take about a minute to do. As you can see, it does it for each of the bands. And it, uh, I can see where it puts it in transmit and it takes the power up to 5 watts on each band. And it's completed. Okay, over on the utility we'll hit next. 50 watt calibration. Calibrate. Now it should go through all the rigmarole again but at the 50 watt level. No, I heard my I heard my power supply hum a little, so yeah, it's definitely definitely drawn a bit when it's doing it. So that's the uh, that's the automated calibration using their software utility, very handy. If you don't have your uh, K3 hooked up to your computer through the serial port, uh, you should do that. It's a really straightforward nine-pin serial connection. If you're doing it uh, with a modern computer, you'd need a USB to serial adapter. Uh, but that utility automates a lot of things like updating the firmware. Plus it opens up uh, rig control for doing digital modes with WSJTX or uh, FLDigi. Um, if you have a serial connection, then you can do rig control and you can key the transmitter also using the serial connection. So that's another handy thing. Okay, it looks like we're almost done with the... Yep, okay. Let's test that the new synthesizer lets us tune down to the, uh, to the general coverage mode. <clears throat> the lower bands. Ugh. Oh, it's been a while since I used an Elecraft. I used to have a KX3. VFO, VFO. Oh, I know what I had to do. Frequency enter 472.0. Enter. Why won't you let me? Oh, there's a tuning speed, isn't there? Rate. Rate. All right, we're getting down there. And look at there, we can go down to 472. 
474.2 would be the popular frequency. It looks like it's picking up noise. I don't have the speaker hooked up, but the synthesizer is working. We can get down to the uh, 630 meter band now. So, yay! Upgrade completed. I'll put the case back on and uh, button everything up, and we'll get it back to the owner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.